That's it. Uh, Friday morning for all of you. Maybe the brothers and sisters. Let's make a sign. Friday morning. morning. Uh, I missed my appointment with you last last month. <laughs> so, siguro, babawiin ko na lang yun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Normal, normal preaching is 45 minutes down, so <laughs> one hour and a half. <laughs> I'm glad to be back again. Uh, a short trip for the poor host. sa Pilipinas compared dito. Pilipinas, bumitin yung buho ko. Ito, buho ko siya. Lalo kasi yung pinapasikatan ko eh. Kaya... <laughs> sermons uh, <clears throat> today. We have finished the series uh, Knowing the Real Jesus. And with the 20 sermons we, we heard, I just hope and pray that you have known the Lord Jesus Christ more. Uh, <clears throat> now we will study the real gospel. There are three things the enemy of souls will counterfeit or has been counterfeiting. The real Jesus, the real gospel, and the Holy Spirit. These are the three things that uh, Satan has been counterfeiting ever since. And uh, we Christians must know who or which are the real things. The real Jesus, the real gospel, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I will begin a series of uh, sermons on knowing the real gospel. I have conducted this uh, series and it reached uh, up to 30, 30 sermons. So, we <clears throat> have time sermon for the next 30 <laughs> 30 months. 30 months. Okay. <clears throat> Knowing the real gospel. Bigay po nung kwan ating key verses. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you. See, Paul has preached this gospel to the Corinthian believers. And the very reason why there was uh, a church in Corinth was because the gospel was preached to that city. And these Corinthians were the believers in the gospel that Paul preached. Pero eto naman siya. I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. <clears throat> so this gospel has been preached and received by the Corinthians. But now, the Apostle Paul would like to remind them again. Sa lahat yata ng katotohanan, ito po ang madaling mawala. Among the great truths of the Bible, the truth about the Gospel, it can easily go away from us. Right? So, here, we are reminded, or the Corinthian believers, are being reminded by Paul of the gospel which he preached to them. By this gospel you have, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. In word na yan, meaning gospel. Okay? Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scripture. This gospel is of 
first importance. In other words, there is no other truth that is more important than the gospel. The gospel is of first importance. Forget about everything else. As long as you know what the gospel is, and you understand clearly what the gospel is, <clears throat> then you are in good ground. Pwede kang matulog ng mahigbing. Hindi nyo man alam ang apokalipsis, hindi nyo man alam ang ibang bagay sa uh, banal na kasulatan. Kung alam ninyo ang ibang helyo ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo, you can sleep soundly every night. Amen. Okay? <clears throat> so, we will study this series of uh, the Gospel. What we will do in this series is address the common beliefs of Christians and measure them with the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Parang ito yung panukat natin. Pag-aaralan natin yung iba't ibang paniniwala ng mga Kristiyano, hindi lang po ng mga born again o ng evangelical, pati po ng iba pang mga uh, paniniwala, lalo na po yung mga bagong naglabasan ng mga iglesia na may daladalang mga ibang katuruan. Pag-aaralan po natin ang mga katuruan nila in the light of the gospel and see if they measure up with the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Ngayong naglipa na po ang maraming uh, aral, kailangan po na asa tayo pagdating sa ibang helyo sapagkat ang ibang helyo po ang siyang panukat natin kung ang isang aral ay tama ba o hindi. Pagka sumasalungat ito, pagka ang isang aral ay sumasalungat sa banal na ebanghelyo, makakatiyak po tayo na hindi totoo. Okay? And so, <clears throat> let us first uh, look at what the real gospel is. Pag-aaralan muna natin kung ano ang uh, tunay na ebanghelyo Para sa ganun, magamit natin ito as a measuring stick in order to uh, evaluate, analyze uh, other beliefs of Christians. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for another great opportunity to listen to your word. We pray that your Holy Spirit be with us. Open our hearts and minds, O Lord, that we may understand the scriptures. Lord, we pray that as we consider truth that is of first importance, your gospel. May our minds be captivated, Heavenly Father, by the glorious gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, keep us in peace while we hear your word. Forgive us our sins. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Let us first uh, look at the meaning of the word gospel. The original word gospel was taken from a noun and a verb in, in, uh, in the Greek language. <clears throat> Basically, the gospel, gospel means good news. But this is not any good news, right? In the Bible, the word gospel, although it means good news, it has taken a very, very specific <laughs> Good news, <coughs> right? Uh, yung iba, pag nanalo sa, pa, sa lottery, good news yun. Right? Uh, pagka pumasa sa board, good news. Rumadwate, good news. But we are not talking about any good news only, right? We are talking about very specific good news that is in the Bible. The Bible is very specific as to what it calls the gospel. In fact, Paul says there is no other gospel than the one he preaches, and that whoever preaches a gospel other than the gospel he preaches is eternally condemned. So, from these words of the Apostle Paul, we can say that the gospel has very specific meaning, because there is no other gospel according to the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> Right. According to our key verses, <clears throat> the gospel is of first importance. In 
the reason is because by this gospel you are saved. And we are talking about eternal salvation. Hindi lang po first stage, second stage na salvation. We are talking about the eternal salvation here. The salvation brought about by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right in this first lesson, we will learn what does the word gospel mean. Although may pahapyaw na tayo dito. What is the gospel about? There is only one gospel, but it is called by many names. And we will know these many names, the gospel, the same gospel is called in the Bible. What are the gospel's distinguishing characteristics that set it apart from other biblical truths? And this is the crux of our uh, sermon today. Be able to distinguish the gospel from other truths in the Bible. Right. <clears throat> what does gospel mean? Gospel is the English translation of the Greek noun, Evangelion, appearing 76 times in the Greek New Testament, and which, and which means good news, and from the Greek verb evangelizo, appearing 54 times, which means to bring or announce good news. Both noun and verb are derived from the Greek noun angelos, meaning messenger. Although in classical Greek, the noun and the verb may in general refer to a message of victory of a political or private nature that caused joy, in the New Testament, both the noun, evangelion, and evangelizo, the verb, acquired a distinctly Christian meaning and used so much so that the Apostle Paul, for the Apostle Paul, there is but one gospel, and there is no other. <clears throat> Here is what the Apostle Paul uh, tells us about this one gospel, but even if we, we means Paul and his associates, or an angel from heaven, not an angel from hell, okay, reads any other gospel. So Paul included himself, the possibility that he may preach another gospel. For an angel from heaven, he preach another gospel. <clears throat> Other than to you, than what we have preached to you, let him be a curse. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be a curse. Uh, sa King James Bible, anathema. Uh, let them be anathema. This is where uh, the word anathema uh, was taken from this verse. <clears throat> a curse, it means a curse. So if you preach another gospel other than the real gospel, right, then you are a curse. By God, of course. Alright, what is the gospel about? What is the only, what is this only one gospel about? Or what is the content of this one gospel? Our key verses, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, give us the clearest and the simplest <coughs> definition and content of the one gospel. Uh, let's read it again. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel. I preach to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I pass on to you as of first importance. And this is now the gospel, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. From this plain and simple statement, we can define the gospel as the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ for us. Right? Died for us, for our sins. Raised on the third day. For us. Now, that those two little words make the good news, uh, make the gospel good news. Right? Because Christ's life, death, and resurrection is for us. If it is for the angels, it's bad news for us. Right? That means we have no Savior. 
But because it is for us, the gospel becomes good news to us. Okay? Kaya huwag niyong kalilingon na pag, pag, pag tinadefine sa inyo, ano ba yung gospel? Right? Half-truth lang yung Christ dies, right? Christ, good life, death, and resurrection. Yun ang gospel. Half-truth lang yun. Right? Pinsusunod yung kaya naging mabuting balita yun. Christ's life, death, and resurrection was for us. For our salvation. Okay? <clears throat> This very simple definition of the gospel has deep implications and determines the distinguishing characteristics of the gospel. Babalikan natin yan mami. Right. <clears throat> the one gospel has many names. Here are common names. The one gospel is called in the Bible. It is called the gospel of God. Right. <clears throat> Now, the may binigay ko dito. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Ang sabi nung iba, there are seven gospels. Right? <clears throat> Dahil iba-ibang pangalan eh. It is, uh, the first one now is the gospel of God. But this is the same gospel that the apostle Paul preached. It is called the gospel of God. It simply means the gospel belongs to God who planned it and executed it. The Father planned it before the world began. Jesus Christ executed the plan and the Holy Spirit proclaims it to the whole world. So, yan ang pan, role ng three persons ng uh, Godhead sa gospel. Right? The Father planned it Jesus Christ executed the plan and the Holy Spirit now proclaims it to the whole world. Right? So that is why it is called the Gospel of God. The Gospel of Christ. This simply means the Gospel is about Jesus Christ. His life, death, and resurrection for us. Kaya pinawag na the Gospel of Christ. <clears throat> now, it's also called the Gospel of Grace. This simply means the gospel is about the grace of God shown to undeserving sinners through Jesus Christ. If we read John 1.17, it says, <clears throat> The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace came through Jesus Christ. It could not have come through any other means except Jesus Christ. Talagang ang dinaanan ng biyaya ng Diyos ay ang ating Panginoon sa Kristo ang bakit. Siya lang kasi ang nagkatawang tao na buhay sa lugar natin, namatay sa lugar natin, at ngayon binuhay ng Diyos dahil tinanggap ng Diyos kung kanyang ginawa para sa atin. Wala pong ibang gumawa niyan maliban kay Jesus Christ. And through that, God has shown us His grace. Right, susunod, the gospel of the kingdom. Now, this simply means The gospel, the gospel of God has a kingdom. Yun lang po ang ibig sabihin. No? Right? Hindi ibig sabihin na there is another gospel called the gospel of the kingdom. No. There is no other gospel. The gospel of the kingdom simply means the kingdom of God has a gospel. That one gospel that was preached by Paul. The kingdom is not the gospel. But the kingdom has a gospel. The one gospel of Christ. Some Christians believe The gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of grace are two different gospels. They are not. Okay? May, may, may may encounter kayo, mga Kristiyano, naniniwala na yung gospel of grace at saka gospel of the kingdom magkaiba raw. Hindi po totoo yun. There is only one gospel which is called by many names in the Bible. <clears throat> Sabi nga ni Paul, there is no other gospel. If you preach another gospel, you are a curse. A careful comparison between Mark 16, 15, and Matthew 24, 14 will clearly show this, what, this, these are one and the same gospel. You really think Jesus is here is speaking of two different gospels? Sabi niya, and he said unto them, Go ye into the world, all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. And this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, Then, the, then shall the end come. Ang magkatanggalan? Ano ba itong uh, gospel na ipipreach to every creature at itong gospel na ipipreach unto all nations? Magkaiba ba yan? Magkaiba ba yung 
to every creature, <laughs> to all the nations. Pareho po yan. The gospel, ito naman ang susunod, the gospel of the uncircumcision and the gospel of circumcision. This simply means the gospel was preached to the Gentiles, the uncircumcised, and the Jews, the circumcised. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, that is Paul, as the gospel of circumcision was unto Peter. And the next verse explains what verse 7 means. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So yung circumcision, yun ang mga Jews. Okay? At yung uncircumcision, yun ang mga Gentiles. In other words, <coughs> the gospel was preached to both Jews and Gentiles. According to Romans 1, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and then to the Gentile. Okay? In other words, mayroong uh, gospel na na preached sa mga Jews. Una. But that same gospel was preached also to the Gentiles, who are called uncircumcised. The Jews were the circumcised. Yun ang distinction between uh, Jews and Gentiles during the time of the Bible. Ang pagkataiba nila, circumcised yung mga Jews, and circumcised yung mga Gentiles. Now, it does not mean that uh, the gospel was preached in the same manner or in the same context as it was preached uh, among the Jews same context as in the Gentiles, magkaiba. Now, the Jews had a very elaborate context of their gospel because the shadows, the ceremonies, and the rites, uh, symbols of the gospel of Jesus Christ was given to the Jews. So that when the gospel was preached to the Jews, it was preached in that context. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the Passover. Jesus Christ, in, in other words, to the circumcision or to the Jews, the gospel was preached in their context, in their religious context. Whereas when Paul preached the gospel to the Gentiles, hindi na kailangan elaborate pa yung context ng mga Jews. Right? It was preached in the context of the Gentiles. Of course, the Gentiles know that they, they were sinning. And Paul uh, uh, preached the same gospel that was preached to the Jews in the context of the Gentile uh, customs, traditions, dunamanya it predicts. But it was the same gospel. The gospel of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our salvation. So, yan po yung mga iba't ibang pangalan. I have seven of them. Now, we come to the very important uh, aspect of the distinguishing features of the gospel. What characteristics set the gospel apart? Ano yung mga characteristic na matatagpuan lang sa Ebanghelyo at hindi matatagpuan sa iba? Ibang katotohanan. <clears throat> right? Since there is but one gospel according to Paul, it is imperative that we know its characteristics that distinguish it and set it apart from any other news in the Bible. The New Testament's definition of the gospel is very specific to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for us. From this definition is derived the distinguishing characteristics of the gospel. Romans 1, 2 to 4, right? The gospel is regarding his son. That is, his means the father, regarding his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because of the simplicity of this statement, its implications are often overlooked. The gospel is regarding or about the son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Napaka-simple, right? But even if, 
Kung titingnan po natin at pag-iisipan niyan, ang ibig sabihin po niyan, hindi yung father, right? The gospel is not about the father. The gospel is about the father's son, Jesus Christ. Right? It is not also about the Holy Spirit. It is about the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, dun sa tatlong persona na nag-iisang Diyos, isa lang po ang uh, one, tinatawag nating gospel dyan. Right? Life, death, resurrection, yung second person ng, ng God, walang iba kung this is Jesus Christ. This is a very simple statement. Right? Although, the Holy Spirit and the gospel, uh, and uh, the Father are very closely related to the gospel. Linaano kasi ng banyan ng uh, Father at ngayon through proclaim ng Holy Spirit, although they are very intimately connected with the gospel, hindi po sila hindi tungkol sa kanila ang gospel. Okay? Right next. They are very closely related to it. This is the necessary conclusion from the simple definition of the gospel as the life, death, and resurrection of Christ for us. Neither the Father nor the Holy Spirit became a man, lived, died, and rose again for us in our place and in our behalf as our substitute before God. Kaya pa, malinaw dapat sa atin yan. Okay? Of the three persons, divine persons in the Godhead, only the second person, the Lord Jesus Christ, became man, nagkatawan tao, na buhay, right, na matay, at muling binuhay, bilang ating kahalili. The Father did not substitute for us. The Holy Spirit did not substitute for us. They did not, one, uh, became man. At hindi sila nakita ng tao na nabuhay dito sa lupa. Hindi sila napako sa cross. Hindi sila nabuhay na maguli. Only the second person of the Godhead experienced all of this as our substitute for God. So dapat maging malinaw yan. The gospel is about Jesus Christ, our Lord. Second, be sure it was the Father out of His the gospel is regarding God's Son, Jesus Christ. It was the Father out of His love who gave His Son as man's substitute so that by Christ's substitutionary work for us, He could save us from sin and death. However, the Bible limits its definition of the gospel to the substitutionary life, death, and resurrection of Christ and not to the Father's act of giving His Son for us. This is not denying the role of the Father in the plan of man's redemption. But the word of God, the Father, is nowhere called in the Bible as the gospel or part of the gospel. There is divine purpose in doing so, as we will learn later. The simple statement that the gospel is regarding God's Son also implies that the gospel is not about the Holy Spirit in its work of giving new birth or in its dispensing its fruit and gifts to man. While the three divine persons have each a unique role in man's redemption, only the work of Christ for us is referred to in the Bible as the gospel. This will become clearer as we consider the other distinguishing characteristics in the gospel. Next, the gospel is about past historical events in the life of Christ. Kung ang gospel, yung uh, life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ, we all know na tapos na lahat ito, di ba? 2,000 years ago, Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ came to this earth, lived on this earth, died on the cross, and was raised again. 2,000 years ago. Sabi ko nga, every time we write the date, right, we testify that Jesus, there was a man called Jesus Christ who came on earth, right, Live, died, and rose again. And we actually refer our date from his date of birth. So now, Jesus Christ was born when 2,019 years ago. Okay. 
Ay harap pa, o kayo magduda na ang lang. Legend lang yung pinaniniwalaan natin. Hindi. Hindi legend. The events in the Gospel happened within a definite time. From 4 BC to 31 AD. A definite place. Judea. Okay? In history. So past historical events na ito. And even non-sectarian, now non-secular, sorry, non-religious historians, yung mga secular historians like Josephus, Philo, they all testify, they all wrote about Jesus Christ. Kung ano nangyari sa Juan, si Jesus Christ. So itong events na ito, tungkol kay Jesus Christ, tapos na. His characteristic of the gospel means the events in the gospel happen outside of us. Pagka historical, na at tapos na. Ang ibig sabihin, hindi yan nangyari sa atin. Yan ang implication yan. It happened outside of us. Bakit in-emphasize natin ito? Kasi kwan eh. Ang ginagawa ng ibang uh, mga Kristiyano, ini-internalize nila yung kwan, yung gospel. At sabi nila, walang kabuluhan kung si Kristo ay kwan, uh, ipinanganak na muli. O ipinanganak na kwan, na, na tao. But unless Jesus Christ is born in you, tayo na. Walang kabuluhan kung si Jesus Christ ay kwan, ay uh, nabuhay na maguli. If Christ is not resurrected in your heart, that event means nothing. Okay, wala na. Uh, Na-internalize na. Kailangan mag-iingat tayo sa mga ganong klaseng sermon na ini-internalize yung mga events na nangyari 2,000 years ago. These are events that happened 2,000 years ago. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, They happen outside of us. The resurrection did not take place here. The incarnation did not take place here. Neither did it take place in you. Ito po ang mga historical events na nangyari outside of us. Hindi natin kailangan i-internalize ito. Iyan ang isa sa mga errors ng mga ng mga Kristiyano. They internalize the gospel. Right. Nothing that is happening inside us can be called gospel. The work of the Holy Spirit within us cannot be called gospel. Regeneration or new birth, conversion, sanctification, the fruit and gifts of the Spirit cannot be called gospel. And these are not called gospel in the Bible. Wala kayong mababasa sa Bible na tinukoy na gospel na yun. This characteristic, that is, gospel is about past historical events, also means that nothing that is happening now or will happen in the future can qualify as gospel. All the works of the Holy Spirit that is happening now cannot be called gospel. A second coming, a future event, cannot be called gospel. Second coming is actually called the blessed hope of the church. Okay? So, anuman ang nangyayari ngayon, anuman ang mangyayari sa hinaharap, hindi natin pwedeng tawagin gospel. Why? Because the gospel has a distinguishing mark that it is about past historical events in the life of the church. Right? Pangatlo, the gospel is about the finished work of Christ. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus' mission in coming down to earth was to seek and to save the lost and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus did not go back to heaven with unfinished tasks. When God the Father resurrected Jesus from the dead, it was God's acceptance of Christ's finished work. The resurrection was God's signature of approval that the work of salvation is finished. This characteristic of the gospel means the events in the gospel were done and finished. 
Nothing can be added to it nor taken away from it. Therefore, anything that is not finished yet cannot qualify as gospel. The ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in man cannot be called the gospel or even part of it. The Spirit's work of regeneration and sanctification, which is ongoing among believers, cannot be called the gospel. Unfortunately, many Christians call this the gospel of part of salvation kasi. Right? To many Christians, regeneration and sanctification, regeneration means the Holy Spirit's giving us a new birth or new nature. Right? Sanctification means you are uh, one, being sanctified. Uh, you, you are growing as a Christian. If you make regeneration and sanctification part of what the Bible calls salvation, then, right? Ang gagawin mo, isasama mo rin ito sa gospel. Regeneration and sanctification. Wala na. Wala na yung one. Tunay na gospel. Meron ka lang ibang classification. Ah, isinama mo. Okay? <clears throat> Kumpulyans of finished work of Christ. Now, the work of regeneration, the work of sanctification, right, uh, sa mga believers, hindi po natatapos yan ngayon. Right? Hindi, hindi natapos yan nung nakaraan. It is ongoing and will only be complete when Jesus comes again. Malinaw yan si Paul. Uh, Philippians 1.6 says, He who has begun a good work shall carry it to completion in the day of our Lord. Right, pang-apat, the gospel is about the perfect and complete work of Christ. Hindi lang tapos itong uh, work na ito na describe the gospel, hindi lang natapos, it is also perfect and complete. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions of fervent Christ and fear to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Now, may mga philosopher naman, Jesus Christ was once made perfect. Before he was made perfect, that means he was imperfect. <laughs> Ang ibig sabihin ng perfect dito, kinumpleto, right? Yung trabaho niya, nag-umpisa sa incarnation, meaning taking up the human body, dun sa womb ni Mary, dun nag-umpisa na ng kwan niya, trabaho niya. And that work of salvation was completed at the cross. As far as uh, Jesus is concerned, yun ang part niya. Right? Until the cross, until his death on the cross. When he died on the cross, ang ibig sabihin, yung work niya na complete. It does not mean that yung work niya imperfect, right? Kaya lang, na, 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 na ganap yung work niya na kompleto when he died on the cross. That is the meaning of once made perfect. Right? Jesus' work of salvation was not only finished but also perfect and complete. Anything imperfect or incomplete cannot qualify as the gospel. This characteristic of the gospel means anything happening in man which is imperfect and incomplete cannot be the gospel. Man's good works, though done in the power of the Holy Spirit, is imperfect at best. The new birth, the new life of the believer, sanctification, etc. Philippians 1, 6 says, God's work in us has begun, but will be brought to completion at the second coming of Jesus Christ. So make no mistake, before Jesus Christ comes the second time, do not ever claim that you are perfect already and you are complete in yourself. No. Right? Nahabutin lang natin yung perfection and completion at the coming of Jesus Christ. So yan, fourth uh, characteristic, the fifth, the gospel is about the final, unrepeatable work of Jesus Christ. Sa kaya yung sa kwan, magandang uh, identifying uh, characteristic ng gospel. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood 
that is not his own. Now remember, we have studied that the, the nung shadow o yung anino ng mga ginawa ni Jesus Christ, yung mga anino sa Old Testament, yung pag-aalay ng buwan, ng uh, animal sacrifices every day, and then once a year, yung high priest, meron siya ceremonia uh, in order to cleanse Israel from the sins they had committed for the entire year. Right? Yung nakarang, what? Kung tawagin nila yun, Day of Atonement. Okay? Ang ginagawa ng buwan, ng uh, priest, high priest, nung panahon na yun, ng Israel, every year niya ginagawa yun, every year, every year, day in, day out, over the 1,500 years of history of Israel, inuulit-ulit nila yun, every year, every year. Pero ang sabi dito, si Jesus Christ. Right? Otherwise, sabi niya, but He, Jesus Christ, has appeared once and for all. Once. Ibig sabihin ng once and for all time. At the culmination of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of Himself. So Christ was once offered to make to take away the sins of many. Jesus' work of salvation was final and unrepeatable. It happened once and for all, never to be repeated again. Yung shadow, yearly nila ginagawa yan. Right? Yung pagpasok sa most holy place. Pero si Jesus Christ, minsan lang siya pumasok dito. Once and for all, after uh, when he sacrificed himself, he entered the most holy place in heaven. Once and for all. Kaya itong ginawa ni Jesus Christ, hindi na po uulitin ito kailanman. Once and for all lang ito. This characteristic of the gospel means any, anything that is not final, but being repeated over and over again, cannot be the gospel. So malinaw, yung pong uh, new birth, hindi yan gospel. Right? Yung regeneration, hindi yan gospel. Bakit? Inuulit eh. Nangyari sa akin, nangyari sa bawat na nampalataya sa ating Panginoon si Cristo, inuulit yan. And so it cannot be the gospel because the gospel is a once and for all event in Jesus Christ. Okay. So the new birth, the new life of the believer, the sanctification of the believer, all of these are being repeated over and over again in the lives of people. Therefore, this cannot be the gospel. Okay? Pag-ani, ito yung last. The gospel is about the saving event in Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. The gospel saves because it is about the saving work of Jesus Christ that is in it. God uses the preaching of the gospel to save men. This is why the preaching of the gospel to all the world is the great and last commission or last command of Christ to his disciples. There is no church work more important than preaching the gospel of Christ. All church activities must be geared up to support the preaching of the gospel. In conclusion, we have seen the distinguishing characteristics of the gospel that make it unique among all the messages in the Bible. One of Satan's last deceptions is to corrupt the gospel of Christ because in so doing, he can deceive many to believe in another gospel and be lost. Therefore, let's beware. Ito po ang pinakamahalagang one. Characteristic, right? It is saving event. Ang ibig sabihin nito, nandun nakapaloob po sa Ibangkelyo ng ating Panginoon ang mabuting balita ng kaligtasan ng isang tao. Kung nandun sa Gospel ang balita tungkol sa kaligtasan ng tao, and the Gospel is of first importance, Ano sa palagay niyo ang sisirain, ang pipiliting sirain una si Satan. Si Satan. Syempre ang, ang, ang sisirain niya una, ang ikokorap niya una, 
Eh, yung first importance. Ha? The gospel. Yun ang ikokorap niya. So, don't wonder na marami pong naglipa ng corruption ng gospel ngayon. I'm not talking about the corruption of the gospel outside the, the Christian church, but inside the Christian church. Maraming kwan, marami nang uh, tinuturong gospel daw, pero hindi naman. Now, dapat pa nating malaman na dahil ang gospel ang siyang pinaka mahalaga sa lahat, dapat ang focus ng church nasa gospel. Okay? Dapat ang focus ng mga preachers nasa ibang helio. Dapat ang focus ng ating pong uh, mga Bible studies na sa ibang hindi. Diyan dapat nakapokus. Pagka nakapokus kayo sa iba, out of focus kayo. At pag out of focus kayo, ibig sabihin, yung gospel malapo sa inyo. Ibig sabihin din, hindi yung gospel ang first importance. Sabi, yun daw malapit sa puso mo. Yun, ang, doon ka nakapokus. Di ba? Totoo yan. No? Ang ating mga may bahay, yan ang uh, Malapit sa puso natin. Yung attention natin, nakapokus. Kanila. Ano? Pagka may tumawag sa iyo, kung namang tingnan, kung si misis, dahil kung si misis, sabot pa siya. <laughs> Forget about uh, fun. Other people, lalo na kung busy ka. Hindi naman pala si Jesus. <clears throat> yung kwan, kung, kung ano yung talagang yung kwan, so kung saan ka nakapokus, yun yung malapit sa puso mo. So kung new birth ang kwan, malapit sa puso mo, at pa, para sa iyo, yun ang gospel, you will always speak about new birth. Or regeneration. Kasi tingin mo, yan. Yan ang first importance. Yan ang bubuhay sa iyo. Yan ang patay. So, yun ang buwan. Ha? Yun ang uh, magpo-focus. And a lot of Christians have different purposes. Alam niyo ba kung bakit nagkaiwain nila yung mga Kristiyano? Yung isang uh, uh, church, nag-focus siya sa church. Na-uwi. Dahil nag-focus siya sa church, na-uwi. Salvation by Becoming a member of the church. Yun ang salvation niya. Kung hindi ka member ng church, sorry. Wala kang salvation. O. Nag-focus siya doon. Na nagkamali siya. Dahil out of focus siya, nagkamali siya. Yung iba, nag-focus naman sa ibang man. Kaya nung uh, meron naman mga group na man, nag-focus sila sa Ten Commandments. Nung sila nakapokus, o anong nangyari? Hindi sila nangingit ng noon. Hindi sila nagtatagaw sa araw ng sabado. Kahit po pero niya ng 50,000 uh, reals per month, hindi niya tatanggapin kung may tabahong sabado. Mara- iba-ibang focus. Right? Pero naman isang church, nag-focus naman dun sa infant Jesus. Doon naman sila nakapokus. Parang hindi na lumaki si Jesus Christ. <laughs> Siyempre, pagka nag-focus ka dun sa baby, eh yung baby, laging kasama yung nanay, o nag-focus ka rin sa nanay. Ganyan talaga eh. So, kanya-kanya focus yung mga churches, kaya nagka-iwan-iwan-iwan. Pero siguro kung ang lahat ng churches magpo-focus sa gospel of Jesus Christ, I mean the real gospel of Jesus Christ, magkataro ko ng kwan, ng unity sa mga churches. Alright. So, yan po ang Ibanghelyo. And uh, as we go along, re-repasuhin natin yan, mga uh, characteristics ng kwan ng Ibanghelyo, at i-a-apply po natin sa iba't <coughs> ibang paniniwala ng mga Kristiyano. May mga paniniwala tayo tungkol sa morals natin ang buwan. Ibanghelyo para uh, 
uh, imbestigahan natin. Ito bang ating uh, pinaniniwalaan tungkol sa morality? Ito ba ay isang ayon sa ebanghelyo ng ating Panginoon Yesu Cristo? Meron tayong pinaniniwalaan tungkol sa last day events. Yung mga mangyayaring uh, events sa darating na panahon, lalo na yung second coming ni Jesus Christ. Yung bang ating paniniwala dyan ay isang ayon ba sa ebanghelyo ng ating Itingnan po natin itong iba't ibang paniniwala. Yung uh, biblical doctrine ng election, meron talagang election sa, uh, sa Bible. Yung bang ating paniniwala sa election ay uh, sang ayon sa ebanghelyo ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. So lahat po yan, titingnan natin isa-isa. Kaya po tumagal eh. Sa ngayon, tumatakbo sa 30 ng sermons dito sa series na ito. Kasi ang daming pinaniniwalaan ng mga Kristiyan. Na dapat natin ito, inisa-isa, inisa-isa ko sa kanya sa uh, mga sermons dito sa gospel. At sinukat ibang mga pinaniniwalaan natin ito ng isang ayon sa ibang kailo. Okay. So, we had just uh, what, begun our journey to knowing the real gospel. And I hope this journey will be a profitable one for each and every one of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, maging kapakipakanabang nawa po ito sa atin at uh, ito ang maging pampalakas ng ating pananampalataya sa ating mga Panginoon Yesu Cristo habang nangitay po natin ang kanyang pagkakas. Tayo po ay umupo at nangilangin. Nakila namin Diyos sa mga banal na makapangilingan sa lahat. Maraming salamat po sa pinagdaan sandali na Amin pong uh, pinagbarik-aralan ang aming uh, alam tungkol sa Evangelyo ng aming Panginoon sa Kristo. Maraming salamat Panginoon sa Banal na Espiritu na siyang patuloy na nagbibigay kaulawaan sa aming Panginoon. Upang aming malaman ang mga maglalim na katotohanan tungkol sa Evangelyo. Kailangan niyo po ang patuloy namin pag-aangat uh, Panginoon na lalong dumawag at dumalim ang pagkakilala namin sa itong nanang ng aming Panginoon sa Kristo at sa Evangelyo mabuting balita ito sa Panginoon ito. Marahin niyo po po na lalaging sandali ng aming pagsamba sa inyo o Diyos pagpatawad kung saan po kami nagsulang at nagkasa. Ito po ang aming samod na sa pangalan